Oh no. Cool, hey, what's up guys? First off, um, I said it in my last video and we're already, we're almost like 300 subscribers and that's absolutely mind blowing to me. So thank you for that, that's sweet. Um, we're going to talk about tree selection though. It's been a while since I've gotten one of these arborist study guides uh, out or whatever. You know? <laughs> so this is kind of a tough one. Um, it really relies on a lot of things we learned in previous uh, chapters. But there's also some other nuggets of knowledge that um, we can grow upon. So tree selection refers to the process of choosing the right tree um, for a particular location. Like if you look at it, it's funny. Those cedars have all been eaten by the deer, but um, I guarantee the landscaper picked those to hide this fence in that property. Um, so yeah, we're looking at specific things like soil type, uh, sun exposure, moisture levels, and intended use of the tree. So that was just one example of intended use. Um, we need to be aware of the pH levels because uh, as we learned in the, like, in the soils and fertili uh, fertilizer chapter, this um, affects the availability of nutrients that the tree needs. Um, you know, we need to also consider the drainage and texture of the soil as well. Um, this will make it easier to select which tree we are going to put and what kind of characteristics that has. So yeah, soil type is important to consider um, when selecting what species of tree you wanna use in your landscaping. Some species are more susceptible to wetter and like less uh, poorly drained soils and other species are do better in drier environments. So that's something we want to consider when selecting a tree. Uh, moisture levels is something we need to take into account for as well. Uh, moisture levels in a planting location is important when selecting a tree because it can significantly affect the tree's growth and health, right? Um, moisture levels in the soil affect the growth and development of tree roots. We learned this in uh, our irrigation chapter, how we want to infrequently but deeply soak a root bulb when we're uh, planting a tree um, and that can really you know that will really help the tree succeed and grow grow those deeper and sturdier roots uh, but if we over uh, water or if we plant a tree that is not susceptible to wetlands this can lead to root rot or um, uh, just fungal diseases, I think. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, root rot and fungal diseases through you know soil soil borne pathogens. Um, different tree species have different moisture requirements. Selecting the proper tree for moisture conditions in the planting location is crucial for the success of the tree. So that brings us to. Um, the intended use of the tree right say like i guess these cedars right here um this is my driveway that's my neighbor's house but um i didn't plant these the previous owner owner did but i can tell you they planted it to kind of make a shield you know and make it more look earthy or whatever and not just have the the side of a house facing the road um, and it's just more aesthetically pleasing. Not that their house, they have a beautiful house. <laughs> but you'll see it done on factories and things like that, a row of pine trees just to hide, you know, or just um, for privacy as well. Um, you know, say you're working for the city and they are designing a park. You're gonna wanna put some trees with large uh, canopies for shade in, um, you know, like your maples. Uh, oaks around here where i'm where i'm from uh it's pretty easy to find <laughs> a good canopy um that's a locust tree right there you know and i like locusts <laughs> they're pretty easy to maintain i guess you gotta prune them a lot but they'll grow they're a successful tree i guess um say we're planting near a road like i use that locust tree as an example for shade but you can see over here, there's power lines. And when they planted, 
I mean, you, I'm sure in Michigan you see it done all the time. Like consumers will come through and do your V cut because I don't think they were when they planted and selected the trees on my road at least they were more so concer concerned about the roots and the stability of the road um these tall they're maples are crimson maples and they get pretty tall uh so they didn't really consider our archaic electric grid system but um so yeah you can use trees to hide buildings you can use them for the canopy and create shade um, you need to be aware of obstacles though too like your uh, power lines right um, if avoidable you don't want to plant uh, something that grows really tall like white pines that's horrible underneath your your power lines um, because they'll just grow right into them and you'd have to top them every other year. Uh, and we know what happens when you top a um, single shoot tree like that. Just, if you don't, a lot of epicormic growth. Uh, I did, I was in Colorado recently and I did notice that there was a lot of topping going on over there. And I'm wondering if it's just to, I was in Boulder. I'm wondering if it was just to preserve like the views of the mountains, so. I don't know. If you know, let me know. <laughs> so it's probably more of a shorter... Uh, here's another example. This is... I mean, these cedars were planted as a, you know, a barrier, kind of like a fence, instead of using a privacy fence. But um, yeah, this is going to be a shorter video. Tree selection. Uh, I feel like it's just compounding knowledge of the previous chapters. <laughs> And then talking about the practical uh, sense of planting in a landscape. So, yeah. <laughs> I hope you liked. I hope this was helpful. Um, leave a comment. Let me know. Let's talk about some questions you guys might have. Uh, it would be great to get that, this comment section full of, like, questions and uh, other people answering. You know, um, yeah, let's build a little community. Sweet. See ya. Talk to you later. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.